Welcome to the Key Action 3 Support for Policy Reform Youth video. We will aim to introduce this key action and to give applicants some points of reference that can be used when applying. First of all, I'm going to give you a brief introduction of the Erasmus Plus programme. Erasmus Plus is the European Union programme for education, training, youth and sport. It runs for seven years from 2014 to 2020, with organisations invited to apply for funding each year to undertake creative and worthwhile activities. It is open to education, training, youth and sport organisations across all sectors of lifelong learning, including school education, further and higher education, adult education and the youth sector. It offers exciting opportunities for UK participants to study, work, volunteer, teach and train abroad. The Department for Education oversees Erasmus Plus in the UK. The programme is managed by the UK National Agency, which is a partnership between the British Council and the Chorus UK. Our role is to manage and deliver the decentralised parts of the Erasmus Plus programme successfully in order to encourage maximum take up of the available UK budget and maximum positive impact for the Erasmus Plus programme in the UK. Each partner in the UK National Agency manages specific parts of the programme, with the British Council responsible for schools and higher education, and the Chorus UK responsible for adult education and vocational education and training. Both organisations manage different aspects of youth funding. For today, we are focusing on Key Action 3 Youth, which is managed by the British Council. Now I will introduce you to a strand of youth funding and to Key Action 3. Structured dialogue, meetings between young people and decision makers in the field of youth. Structured dialogue is a process implemented by the European Commission that aims to increase cooperation with civil, so civil society and get first-hand input from young people. Key Action 3 structured dialogue projects give young people the opportunity to interact with decision makers on issues of concern to young people and to influence policy. This action promotes the active participation of young people in democratic life and fosters debate around topics centred on the themes and priorities set by the structured dialogue and renewed political framework in the youth field. This framework recognises young people as key actors in society that should be considered as an important resource. Structured dialogue is organised into 18 month work cycles, with each cycle focusing on a different thematic priority. The topic of the current cycle, which, is, which runs from 2017 to 2018, is Youth in Europe, What's Next? More information about structured dialogue themes is available on the European Commission's website. Structured dialogue projects can take the form of meetings, conferences, consultations and events. These events promote the active participation of young people in democratic life in Europe and the interaction with decision makers. Through these events, young people can make their voice heard in the European policy shaping process. A structured dialogue project has three phases which are shown on your screen. Plan and preparation implementation of the activities and evaluation, which would include reflection on a possible follow-up. Under this action, a project can, can comprise of one or more of the activities listed on your screen. Typical activities include meetings, events, seminars, debates and discussions, meetings and seminars linked to the official EU presidency youth conferences, Events and debates linked to European Youth Week and consultation, including online opinion polls and surveys.
It is important to remember that young people should lead the activities in all stages of the project from preparation to follow up. Statutory meetings of organisations or politically influenced events are not eligible for grants and a structured dialogue. Certain types of UK organisations active in the youth field can participate in a structured dialogue project. The list of eligible participating organisations are now showed on your screen. Please remember that organisations must be established in a programme country or in a partner country neighbouring the EU, regions one to four. For a full list of these countries, please consult pages 21 to 22 of the 2018 Erasmus Plus programme guide. Therefore, the lead applicant must be from an Erasmus Plus programme country. Any participating organisation established in a programme country can apply for structured dialogue youth funding. Please note that organisations from eligible partner countries can only take part in the project as partners and not applicants. In informal groups of young people are not eligible to apply for funding under this key action. Here I have listed just some of the formal criteria that the project must respect in order to be eligible for an Erasmus Plus grant. For a full list, please look at page 190 of the 2018 Erasmus Plus programme guide. Key Action 3 structured dialogue projects can last between 3 and 24 months and do not need a partner from another country unless transnational or international meetings are organised. If your project involves transnational or international meetings, the activity must involve at least two participating organisations from at least two different countries, of which one must be a programme country. For any national meetings, the activity must only involve at least one organisation from a programme country. Structured dialogue projects are for young people aged between 13 and 30, resident in the countries involved in the project. If the project foresees participation of decision makers or experts in the youth policy field, these participants can be involved regardless of their age and geography. Youth dialogue funding is the only part of Erasmus Plus where projects can take part just in the UK. There are three deadlines for structured dialogue in the field of youth in 2018. Applicants must submit their applications by the dates and times shown on the screen. Please remember that late applications will not be accepted, so please submit your applications as early as you can. Projects will be assessed against the award criteria detailed on page 191 of the 2018 Erasmus Plus programme guide. The assessor will evaluate your project proposal against three criteria. The first is the relevance of your project, where you can score a maximum of 30 points. The quality of your project design and implementation, where you can gain a maximum 40 points. And impact and dissemination, 30 points. To be considered for funding, your application must score at least 60 points overall and score at least half of the maximum points in each award criteria category. So, for example, if the maximum points to be gained under impact and dissemination are 30, you must score at least 15 in this category. Full funding rules are detailed on page 193 of the 2018 Erasmus Plus programme guide. Here on the screen, you can see the Key Action 3 budget categories. There are four budget categories in total, two of which you must apply for under structured dialogue funding. Travel costs and organisational support. Travel costs are based on the travel distance per participant and must be calculated using the European Commission distance calculator. Organisational support costs are based on the duration of the stay per participant. There are also two optional funding categories, special needs support and exceptional costs. 
If justified, you will be eligible to receive 100% of the eligible costs requested under special needs support to assist those participants with disabilities and accompanying persons. Exceptional costs could include visa costs, costs related to dissemination and, and explo exploitation of results, or costs to support the participation of young people with fewer opportunities. The request for financial support to cover special needs support and exceptional costs must be motivated in your application form. Now I am going to provide brief information on how you can prepare to apply. If you want to apply for funding or participate in a project proposal, your, your organisation needs to be registered on the participant portal via EU login to obtain a PIC number. If your organisation is already registered, you do not need to register again. You can refer to the guidance we have created to assist you in completing your application or contact our help desk via telephone. All contact details will be provided at the end of this presentation. You must also remember to upload the 2018 legal and financial identification forms. When you register to obtain a PIC number, you should upload the forms then. If you are already registered as an organisation, you will need to log on to the participant portal to upload the 2018 legal and financial forms. If you are interested in applying for structured dialogue funding, we recommend that you access key resources created by the UK National Agency that can support you in your application. If you would like to receive any of the above links, please send us an email with your request and we would be happy to provide you with any of this information. Our contact details are now listed on your screen. If you have any follow-up questions with regards to this video, please do not hesitate to contact us via the telephone number or email addresses shown. Thank you for listening to this video today. We hope it has been useful. Here are our social media contact details should you wish to keep in touch. Thank you.